Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I am Keith. No, you're not. You're Jeffrey. <laughs> Just kidding. Good job, everybody, for knowing that. And good job for you for remembering I that. I remembered it, even oh, after a long day yesterday. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're really glad to have you with us. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a special, fresh, different day this it morning. Is. Um, it is Friday morning, um, which normally we don't do a live video on Friday morning, but we are here anyway because we had some serious technical difficulties with Facebook last Wednesday. Um, not our fault. You can call uh, Mark Zuckerberg. That's Mark at uh, Facebook.com. That's where you're going to find that. Um, and let him know. And everybody, uh, you know, really, you can go in and just shout at him and, and say, we missed our favorite show of the week. Right. Because of you, Mark. And Happy you, Fourth of July. And your technical staff. <laughs> but while we're letting people jump on, we've got a really uh, fun episode. We've got some cool stuff happening today. Uh, but before we get to that, Keith. How was your 4th of July? It was really nice. Went yeah. out yesterday, attempted to do a little more mud air raiding. Oh, okay. It didn't go very well. No? No, it's kind of cold and not, not much sun. It was hard to see the fish. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of a cloudy day it yesterday. It was. And then, so then we came back, got a two hour nap, went over to some friends and barbecued and just watched the fireworks and got home about 11.30 last night and came to work. Very nice. For a That's while. Good. That's really good. For a short while. Very short while. Yeah. How was your uh, day? It was good. I uh, I got up to uh, one of our uh, one of the best golf courses I think in the area, um, Wasatch. For those of you around this area, played the mountain course on Wasatch, and it was the most beautiful day I have ever had golfing. Actually, not too high temperatures. The sun was shining. It was you know like low 80s. Score oh, was, it was in, so uh, nice. Scored in the, like the low 200s. <laughs> I think I'm going to say the 80s, like the temperature. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, that. Um, but it was really fun. It was really awesome. And then we headed over to the family for a little barbecue. Yeah. So it was good. It was a really nice day. Um, I do love to hear stories of everybody else's. If anybody got out, did some fishing, caught anything big, did anything crazy, got blown up by fireworks. Yeah. I you love to hear all... these stories. So, yeah, if you, <laughs> you're missing you have some fingers. Those... <laughs> yes, we don't uh, want to see your fingers missing. Send those in. I want to see them. <laughs> Um, but we do have lots of uh, lots of experts with us today, so get your questions in now. We're going to try and get to a lot of those. In fact, we have enough questions. I'm so excited to talk to our special guest today that I've got two, two pages. pages. Two I've got two pages of notes today <clears throat> that, uh, that I want to ask. So we've got a lot to get to. Uh, so before we bring them out, do you want to uh, maybe like introduce what, what's going to happen today? So today we're going to talk a little bit more about the... Uh, the turbo that's going to be released. Yes. That's going to be released through Backwater Performance. We've got it here. It's a little bit different camel pattern. We didn't have enough time to get the whole thing done, but we just wanted to make it people yeah. know that there is something neat and cool under this aluminum shrouding stuff. Yes, absolutely. So, so it's what we did is why it looks different is that we had our, our fire bug uh, and Ricky yes. go to town, do what he will on this and for the 4th of July, we got a little uh, red, white, and blue. And it's amazing. I like that. I, I, I personally would like to do the whole motor that way. I agree. But I'm not sure we can do that. I don't know. Well, we'll see if we can get to it. But it is really beautiful. So we're going to be talking about this today. Yes. This right here, game changer. Game changer. Absolutely. A, an amazing game changer. Yes. So um, We got a chance to ride around in, on uh, Wednesday. We, uh, we, we had a treat. We've got lots of pictures, videos coming out with that later, which is going to be really amazing. But I have so many questions. So without further ado, I want to bring on our special guest. We've got, uh, from BPS, we've got Glade Harris joining us. And from OBO, we've got uh, Dustin O'Brien. Come on in, guys. How's it going? Hey, hey how are you? Hey. How are you doing, Dustin? Up, how are you, bud? Hey, how are you? Good, Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, so we've got lots of questions. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the phone. Okay. And see what kind of is see what's, what is, see, see what's, what's shaking right now. See if we've got anybody. <laughs> just... Aha! All right. So, in the meantime, though, tell us my very first question that I have, and that I think a lot of people are really asking is why? What is what was the genesis of this project? Why why this? Why now? What was the goal and, and why? So, sure. either one of you, take us away on that. So, I mean, that's kind of what we do with backwater performance is, is try to make your duck boat go faster, haul bigger loads, um, that, that kind of thing. Um, 
the, the reason that we came up with this kit is because we wanted an option for guys that didn't want to break into the, the internals of the motor. That they, they bought a stock 40 and they want more power. So we came up with a kit that is completely bolt on, easy to install. So it's just it's just a simple, it comes in a box, anybody can install it. So this is this is you baby. How long have you guys been working on this project? When when did you start on it, Dustin? It's been almost two years. Almost two years? Yeah, just under two years. Uh, we had the first one and we just kept driving, putting a lot of hours on it. Of course, prototyping, changing things, um, uh, redesigning, changing turbos, changing fuel controllers, changing all sorts of stuff, fuel pumps. Um, we had to try everything to, to make sure that in the end we have a final product that is bolt on and user friendly and reliable. And right. So this is your brainchild. Yeah. As and and what is your uh, what's your background? Where where do you where do you come from? Tell us a little bit about you. Um, I grew up in the automotive and diesel industry. Um, got into turbos when I was younger uh -huh. and pretty much <laughs> love them ever since. And uh, been building a lot of diesel performance, a lot of snowmobile performance, um, Argos. Uh, you name it, we've turboed it. Uh, I have a really good reputation of building and designing things and putting it in a box and shipping it. Um, people don't want to have to cut, hack and whack, weld, have to do that stuff. People don't have that, you know, like knowledge or any of that. So it's nice just to be able to show up with a box and install it. Yes. So I've made really good kits and I've been really successful at doing that. Um, so that's why when this came up and the Argo thing kind of led to this, and the Argo and the duck boat have similar things. When they get weighted up, they don't go very fast. Um, so that's what led to this, and uh, it works. I mean, it's great. Yeah, it <laughs> does work. It does work. It, oh, does work. Right. it works. It works really well. <laughs> yeah. No and doubt it, about and it. It's so simple that people, I think, are really overthinking it. And you know, when you hear turbo, you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, it's going to explode. It's it's going to blow up." Well, the fact is, is 90% of vehicles on the road today have turbos on them. Yeah. And if you're not driving a truck with a turbo or a car with a turbo, eventually you will. <laughs> it's free power. Uh, there's nothing like it. Um, Good. So. Great. Well, we are we're getting, being flooded right now. We've got <laughs> lots of questions. Okay. Um, Good. A lot, a lot of questions. So we're going to get to all of these. I want to ask a lot of my questions first because I'm more important well and we, and we <laughs> might actually else. answer some of <laughs> yes. those questions and these questions hopefully will get answered but we're going to make sure we get to all of these so uh stay tuned let's let's uh dive into some of these uh but before we do that though uh glade how did you two connect um, for this project so uh we just kind of all put our heads together when dustin uh came to us with this and and uh all tried to make it work uh we've both been working on it for you know over a year and a half uh, trying it on different engines, uh, the 37, the 40s, different frames, different boats, just seeing what works. We've been all over the country try testing this thing out. So, um, yeah, he just he's, Florida, Louisiana, yeah. Yeah. with Andy and uh, Sid, you know, two great guys. And so we got a team of people that are helping us. I mean, it, it takes a team to create something like this. Like, I can design anything, but it takes a team to get it out there and get it to you guys and, you know, just. We want to make it a reliable, safe, fun, good horsepower. Like it starts and goes every day. Like, like we don't want a time bomb. So. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so start me off with this. What motor are we using this on? It'll, it'll go on either a stock 37 or a stock 40. Um, and it can't be a, a 44, it can't be a 50, it can't be something that, that anybody's done any other kind of modifications on. No heads, no cams, nothing like that, no pistons. Simply a stock 37 or a stock 40. Stock 37 or stock 40. And why Why is that specifically, mechanically? The reason is, is because we understand these motors come stock. We understand the programming. We understand the compression. We understand how all that stuff works. So it's really easier to bolt a bolt-on kit and have all that work. If It doesn't matter if you sell one or a hundred they're all going to be the exact same programming. They're going to be the same motor. We understand it. If you have a motor that's out there that's got a stage one, stage two, stage three from any number of people out there that build this stuff, and then you bolt the turbo on it, we don't, we don't know what you have going on in that motor. And your motor could be radical already, 
and then we put a turbo on top of it, our tuning is not going to be even close to what it is. And you know, there's a lot of factors involved when going and tuning and and and, and turboing. And so to add all them other factors in is just going to be a nightmare. A recipe for disaster. It is. It's gonna. Yes. It's just going to be a recipe for a disaster. So stock motors and stock parts actually are very strong as long as you don't push them to extreme and you know we're running six to seven pounds of boost and that's a good safe number that we're making power and it's reliable um, but to have a modified motor and stack a turbo on it that is just a recipe for disaster yeah. and it's it, going to be a nightmare for us and then you're going to break your stuff and then you're going to hate us and it, we just don't want to deal with that so yeah. And, 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 and as of right as well. now, we're only selling it for the 37 EFI and the 40 EFI. And maybe down the line, we'll maybe have some turboed motors or something come up with something. But for right now, it's just the 37 and 40. And that's... and 40 stock. Yeah. Great. Well, it's yeah. a great starting point. Really it is. is and, you know. and it's a stock motor, and we know what it does, and we know how to start from there. And, I mean, we're going to be doing future stuff. And so just, you know... I guess just keep you know posted or whatever, but yes. uh, yeah, stock is just awesome because yeah. well, and we know we know too. We've ridden a lot of these stock 40s. We love we yep. love that stock 40s. Yes, I do. I, I mean, really it's like it's, it. a, it's a crazy awesome motor anyway. So yes. so I think that's that's great. Great answer to that question. Um, my next question is so let's talk about in, installing mm -hmm. right. So this is a bolt-on kit. Yes. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have this sent to me. What then? You get it. It comes with detailed instructions and pictures of every nut and bolt to take off, save, throw away, whatever. It comes in detailed. I mean, it's like 25 steps, I think. It's literally, if you can follow instructions to put your kids' Christmas toys together, you should be able to bolt this on. It doesn't so come in Spanish or... Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have I mean, Ricky put mine on. Yeah, like... If you can follow instructions, you should not call us. I mean, uh, but it is 100% bolt-on. Um, it's how, very simple. It, it right, should take how, you, you know, two to four hours at the most. That's, you know, you and your buddy sitting around drinking a case of beer. Hopefully you tighten everything up. Um, and then the electronics, it, they all just plug right in. There's no cutting. There's no hacking and whacking. There's no adjusting the box. Nope, Once it's set, it's nothing. there. Um, so really, it's been designed specifically yes. with with this kind of bolt-on idea in yes. mind. Yep. Yes. I do want to say something. If you are one of those guys like myself that like to step, I mean, skip steps on yes. the instructions or don't even read them, don't do that. Yeah, you're gonna mess up. <laughs> I yes. myself did that, and I had to take it all apart, start all over again, because I, there is steps right there that you'll see that are like, oh yeah, I'll put this later. Oh no. no, no, you can't. It needs yeah. to go in order. You because have to follow the Sometimes you might not be able to get to a bolt that yep. you should have got at the last step. And if you don't tighten that bolt up, you're gonna have boost leaks or exhaust leaks. And this is a confined system. Everything has to be solid and working together or it's gonna throw the motor off of how it runs and operates. Right, so, but it is designed, like we were saying, oh, yes. it is designed with, with this kind of with the user installation. And, yes in mind yes. we want we want you to purchase this exactly. this kit and we want you to put it on yourself yes. exactly yep it's all it's, it's and, easy turnkey. And, you, and you're gonna I be able to oh, sorry. love that idea that's what that's what really gets to me about this project is that um, that anybody can do it it's not something you've got to pay somebody you, no. you're not gonna miss out on your motor for a week or two nope. having this installed it is just well, or you, just you sending your it. motor off to get built right. and all that yeah. you know labor and time and tearing your motor apart it's just a lot of work when this thing comes to your house in UPS yes and then in, an in two hours you're three you can install you're ready to go yeah. yes. I, I love that I really really love that okay um, so one of the questions I wrote and we've kind of touched on this a little bit but um, how how much am I gonna need to dig into this motor to attach it? Am I going to need to get into the wiring? Am I going to need to, like how much tear apart am I going to have to do? No, not really much at all. You take the stock air filter off, you take um, just some basic things off the very top of the motor, you take your existing muffler off and you know within two to three hours this can go from your completely stock motor to ready to get back on the water. 
that's that's awesome. And then, like I said, the electronics just plug right in. Yep. They're, they're okay. connectors, and they plug right in. It you can't mess this up. Well, you have made it about as idiot proof as you can. Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't even I've been be doing idiot. this a long time, and so I, I this is idiot proof. That's yeah, yeah, famous you, you, last yeah, words. Exactly. You. Famous last know. words too. You've made it. You've made it as easy as you can. I yes. I I mean I'm sure we might get some phone calls or something like that, but for the most part, I I've done it long enough that I think I've. I'm good at writing instructions and, and laying it all out for people that, you know, aren't a hundred percent mechanically inclined out there. And yeah. So like, there's just a lot of those people out there that, you know, are, that don't work on stuff all the time. And so this is, this is really simple. So you don't need a $50,000 snap on toolbox no. to do what you're doing. No. Uh -uh. You know, no. good set of probably most guys who you know, have a garage at home yes. have the tools yeah. and what they need right there in their own garage to do this. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we've got the only fuel control system in the entire market that can be sent in the mail and a guy plugs it in and goes. Yes. Everybody else's system is you have to either hook computers up to it, you have to send in your ECM, you have to let somebody else flash it, come back, you have to do a bunch of crazy Tuning stuff and that and it, ours is the most, uh, it, it covers everybody, it, it does more adjustments than anybody else's and it comes in a box and you plug it in. Yes. Nice. Okay, so yesterday, 4th of July. Let's talk. One of the big things that we pride ourselves here at Mud Buddy is that is that our parts are manufactured close, yes. yep. close by. Yes. We take a lot of pride in that we being do. American made. Tell us about that. Where these parts are manu manufactured, and uh, and all of that. It's all manufactured here in Utah, at either my shop or another shop. Um, all the parts are laser cut and bent and welded and fabricated. Machine shops here locally. I, I love to keep my business and my products locally and my vendors, um, they're great to me. Uh, we build good stuff, it's not cheap. We use all high quality stainless for the mufflers and the headers, everything's all TIG welded. Um, the turbo's a the turbo, brand name turbo yes, that you it's, can't find on eBay. It's not an eBay turbo, a $250 mm -hmm. turbo. This is an expensive automotive turbo that comes on vehicles. Um, I've always used a good quality turbo because that's the most important part of the, the, you know, the build. And so if you use a cheap part down the road, you're going to break that. And cheap turbos, getting them hot, shutting them off, getting them hot, shutting them off, it breaks them down. And having a good quality turbo with good bearings and good components in it, it it's going to save us headaches and phone calls and yes. we don't I don't do that I learned that a long time ago designing kits and building kits is if you want cheap parts you're gonna get cheap results and get a lot of phone calls and a lot of headaches and we just want to sell this stuff and not really have to talk to anybody <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. you know I mean yeah we're gonna have to talk to people but at the same time we don't want to be replacing turbos and dump components when it's all there and that's why we use yeah we don't yeah we want to do it to, you know and that means if it costs a little more and we're not you know it's just a, a better system if it's all there we you know we use stainless bolts and you know o-rings and good gaskets and st st steel braided lines it's not cheap stuff and so these are tough motors but we wanted to make a tough kit and a reliable kit that if you come through the you know the brush and hit a branch and it rips stuff off like there's a reason why I designed the covers the way I did. In fact you want to walk over and kind of point yeah. out some some options. Now as we were saying this is a custom paint job from our firebug Ricky. Yeah Ricky. Um, who, who crushed that so. Uh, so I designed all this to cover the stuff underneath it like the air box and the turbo and the reason I did that is because I see people with videos going through the trees and bouncing off stuff and if this was all exposed you would rip that stuff off and so I wanted it strong and tough so if you hit this it's tough and then you know I, 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 I like using the stock air cleaner assembly because it flows amazing and it just the fit and fit you, you know the finish is amazing you already have it. You already yeah have you already it. have it and you don't have and to, you don't have to, you don't have to, have to no a, a, a a air filter yes I mean I could have made a K&N filter that stuck up here but you're gonna hit that going through the trees and knock that off and that's that's just not practical for everybody. I wanted something very tough looking and strong and it covers the components that really you don't need to see. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it, it, it's tough. And the air cleaner assembly, people, it flows amazing and it keeps the, you know, the dirt and the dust or debris out and it still flows amazing. And 
You know, we've done a lot of testing with the stock air cleaner system and the K&N, &N, and the K&N &N makes a, you know, a pound or, or I mean, a, you know, one or two horsepower more, but the stock air cleaner works amazing. So that is one thing that if you don't, when you get this kit, you need to buy a new air filter. Like that's just, you know, you need to do that. It, it, it's, it, it needs to suck as it much. To yeah, it needs to breathe. And so the more it breathes, the better it is. Um, you know, the exhaust, we've, we had to cover the turbo and the muffler. And I built this because this thing gets stupid hot. Like I see guys hanging ducks. I see people hanging stuff over yeah. there. <laughs> if you were to touch that after you got done running, that's 13, 1400 degrees. I mean, at night, guys are gonna come out of the marsh and they're gonna look back and they're gonna see their header glowing. It's the coolest thing in the world. I mean, it looks like you could you know, roast a marshmallow off the back of it, but to have that exposed is dangerous. And so I made this whole cover to utilize that and to cover and protect people. So, and to make it tough if you were to hit something or anything. Well, and the nice thing about that cover, like you said, it's gonna protect the guys because anybody who's been a duck hunter at one time in their life has either burnt themselves yes. or yeah. lost a jacket. Yes. Oh, yeah. And a yes. lot of jackets. Yes. Yes. A lot of jackets. A lot of jackets, yeah, yeah you name so it. It's yeah, bad. and so I tried to make it as tough and durable because I know what you guys put these things through and I've, I've seen it and I just, uh, I definitely wanted it tough looking and t and tough, you know, in general, so we didn't have problems and breaking stuff. It's just, frankly, I like to sell a kit and not really ever hear from that person again. Is you know, I like to hear that it's you know working and kicking butt, but I don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm breaking this, I'm breaking that. So that's another reason why we've done so much testing and so much R and D is to is to try to eliminate those problems so people don't have that problem. So. Fired up, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, that's uh, that's what we had a lot of questions coming in. Just let yeah, they, they want to hear it. They want to hear it. Number so let's one fire it up. A nice little purr to it. Hey, I guess we put gas. Yeah, that'll in. that'll bring us to our biggest point, in my opinion, is the the, the noise. Yeah. This thing is quieter than your stock muffler. It's quite obviously quieter than any other aftermarket muffler out there. But um, which is a big thing. That's part of the reason why we decided to to proceed with this project is because there's a lot of um, states and cities and and marshes across the country that are actually starting to limit decibels. Um, and some of these, you know, loud, louder exhaust systems. Uh, you know, I don't like I don't like listening to it myself driving through all day. Right. You know, I'll, if, if I if I'm in somebody's boat that's got a super loud muffler, I'm wearing earmuffs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this thing is quieter than stock. Well, it needs to be quiet. That's just yeah. the way it is. Absolutely. Well, that's what people have been begging for for years and years. Is is I want a muffler that gives me more power than stock, but is quieter than stock. But can be quieter. And <laughs> that's never really been possible until now. <laughs> Uh, they'll be great out in the marshes. Like well, Arkansas is having a real tough time with that right exactly. now in the last couple of years. So oh, yeah. this is really going to help that because you're not going to worry about the, uh, the the fish cop out there checking you for decibel reading because it's not loud. Exactly. No, and then when there's two or three of you in the boat and you're driving through and you're doing 30 plus mile an hour, normally you can't hear each other. Now right. you can actually talk to people in the in in the boat while you're. Yeah cruising down the, you know, the, yep. the water. See, it, the, the surprising thing is when we start running this, you're actually starting to hear almost more engine noise rather than exhaust noise. You can yes. hear your valves, you can hear, right. you can hear all that stuff. You can hear the turbo whistle a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. Over the exhaust noise. Yeah, over the exhaust noise. Good. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into some of the nitty gritty here. The, okay. the, the question that everybody really wants to know, let's talk ponies. Okay. So uh, we're not going to go into, uh, right now we're not going to go into exactly how many horsepower it makes. Uh, we're going to say that it makes 50% more horsepower than stock. Uh, we've got an in-house dyno here. We've dynoed four or five different motors. We've, we've done all sorts of different things. Uh, we just don't want to make any guarantees to anybody. So it makes 50% more horsepower than stock. And it does. 
Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this if it didn't work. And just a note on that, and the reason for that is because you can have a, Keith is going to have a 40 with five hours on it. Yes. Uh, Glade is going to have another one with 400. Exactly. Yes. It is going to be... Yeah, be day and night yeah, you're gonna yeah. start with and elevation. Different, different I mean, elevation is a big thing. I mean, we're at what 45, 48, yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah, we are. I mean, so and then when you go to sea level, that I mean, it it it, it should automatically compensate and mm -hmm. and do that. I mean, you should be making the same power, but I mean, we all know that at sea level, everything runs better. Yeah. I mean, us yeah. guys up here, we have to have turbos just in order to go the same speeds that you guys are. Yeah. So it's uh, I mean. And then we have our mountains up here that go to 12,000 feet. So there's the a reason why there's a reason why we all have turbo snowmobiles is because we still want to make 250 horse when we get to 10,000 feet. You know, we don't want to be making 50. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty boring. So yeah, you can't do crazy things when you only have no. 50 horsepower. Yep. So and so the dyno, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna vary from dyno to dyno, and so. We know what the motors make, and we we have an understanding of how much horsepower they're going to make, but they're going to deviate from motor to motor. And yep, you're going to make about 50% more than you've got yes. to begin with. And that's a that's a great amount. Yes, it is. It's oh, a it's, great bolt. -on it's a great amount, power. and it's safe. I mean, yeah, we could probably make 70 or 80% more if we wanted to. I know we could, but do you want to work on your motor? Do you want to blow it up? Do you want to get left in the marsh? No, you want to make at least. You know some more horsepower and be safe and reliable and make it home every day exactly. yeah so um great so the last question i have and then uh because we're having some people join on late some are kind of asking a lot of the questions over again so yep. we're going to recap a lot of this um but tell us what's the process now so I mean, for all of us, this is not a not a tough sale. I mean, I want one. I mean, I, I think we all we all want one. What is the process? What's what happens next? Sure. So there's basically three different ways you can buy it. Uh, you can either uh, give us a call directly, um, call BackwaterPerformance.com or on the website, and you can get on the list uh, right now, um, and we can send you the kit to your door, and you can take care of it yourself. Uh, the second option is go to your local dealer. We've got over 100 dealers all across the country. Um, go to your local dealer and they can order it for you. You can either take it home from them or you can have them install it. Uh, the third option is um, we can actually build a complete turnkey power head with the turbo already installed uh, and you can um, just put it on your frame. Uh, you can order a frame for a mud buddy and you can have us put the, the engine on it. We can ship it to you that way. Uh, which are you know any of those three methods yes you got it um and they also work on all the other uh, as long as yeah, it's a vanguard 37 or 40 it'll bolt on it doesn't horizontal, matter horizontal. Frame. only horizontal. horizontal for right now it we're, doesn't, yeah. yeah we're working on a vertical but this is our main goal right here was the horizontal shaft and now i'll start to work on the vertical so you guys will just have to be patient the guys with verticals so. awesome because um, we that, will have to test that, we will have to make sure everything works. We're just not going to hurry up and build them and send them out. Like we know the stuff works, but the vertical is a little different. Turbo needs to sit differently. There's just going to be some little different things, and so we want to make sure that stuff's good. So it's it's going to be down the road a little ways. So got it. Um, and when will this be available? So we've already pre-sold the first batch. It's gone. Um, the next batch is going to be available in about a month, somewhere around a month. Uh, so give us a call, give your dealer a call, get on the list right now if you're interested um, because they're, you know, the last video we did, we sold the first batch the first day. Yeah. So. And like I said, just be patient with us. We're, you know, it's all new, it's in production, and I'm good at this stuff, but the first initial ones, they definitely take a little time to figure out, get boxed up, and get everything perfect. And so we're, we're just making sure it's all right so we don't have to have any headaches or, you know, phone calls about missing parts or, missing this or missing that you know exactly. so sure. we're just uh you know we want to get it out there as fast as possible but we're just kind of doing it a little slower just to make sure we, we cover all of our bases and that and then you guys are happy so. yes um and the big one price price um so we're it's a little different than the, than the first one that i announced but we're going to do a retail of 2650 um so you can get that you can you know go to our website you call Travis or Corbin, myself, uh, go to your dealers and, and you'll be getting the same price, $26.50. $26.50. Yes. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Um, very good. 
one of the things that we did want to talk about that we discussed uh, on Wednesday as we were getting our little little demo and being wowed um, was fuel. You wanted to, yes. to mention, talk about some fuel. With fuel with octane. Mm -hmm. People with fuel, you need to understand that these are high performance motors. And I'm sure guys out there with stage two, stage threes, I mean, you guys are making power. There's no reason why you're not running 91 octane or better. And when I mean 91 octane, you should be filling your boat up that morning before you go out on the water. The reason is, is because when gas sits, it loses octane. And when it sits out in the sun in these, you know, our gas tanks, they even lose more octane. So if you have a boat that's been sitting there for two or three weeks and you take it out with the turbo or even high performance, you're going to get some pinging. And we experience that here with old gas. And so I really recommend these big gas tanks that guys have, don't fill them up all the time. Or if you do, make sure you're always putting fresh gas in there and the best quality gas you can. Don't go to your the shittiest gas station in town and fill up with gas. Like, go to a better gas station. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you're not putting that much no, fuel in some like of these tanks. No, you just so. bought a really nice motor and you bought a turbo kit. Like, spend a little extra money and gas, drive down the street and go to the nicer gas station that has more cars coming through there. It's fresher gas. Yep. Um, no 85, no, no 85, no, no race, no race fuel. Don't no. worry about that. 91 to 93. We, you know, we didn't want to build a race kit. If we wanted to build a race kit, we, I mean, we can. We can just turn the boost up and run 116 race gas. Like, that's not a big deal. But people don't want to do that. They want to be able to go to their gas station, get drinks, and fill their boat up. And that's what we've completed here. Another big issue is, is fuel lines on fuel injection. And carbureted too. Guys with carburation, you should be changing your fuel lines or covering them with something. They in 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 the sun they deteriorate, they crack. And if you don't know, fuel injection is a pressured system, and if it has any time of leak or anything, it throws the whole motor off. It'll run differently. It changes the tuning, and so. If you have old gas lines that are cracking and brittle, you need to replace them and cover them. And that is gonna be one of the biggest things is fuel. And if you're not gonna run good fuel, this might not be the system for you, but you need to run at least 91 plus all times and try to always fill up with fresh gas as much as possible because the octane's there and you need that in order to run a turbo. Right. So and any other motor. I mean, I'm sure there's guys out there with stage threes and these radical builds that I'm sure they get some pinging every now and then. It's just because of bad gas. Or, you know, these guys are letting them sit and they're sitting for two or three weeks and it's raining and moisture. That stuff all just gets in there. And the motors don't like burning water. So, yeah. Good. So, yeah, but good fuel. Great. Good fuel. Hey, remember guys, like and share. Get this out to all your buddies who maybe not be able to watch it yeah. right at this moment, but That's like right. and share it so they can uh, check it out a little bit later because it will be on Facebook forever. Yes. Also, if, you, if you guys share it, uh, whoever shares it, I'll uh, do a random drawing for a, a hat and a shirt. There you yeah. go. Yeah. All right, I like that. So like and share, we'll keep track of that. But everybody do, absolutely like and share. Um, and then keep these questions coming because even if we don't get to them today, we will get to them later. But I do have a bunch here that I kind of want to get to. Let's do it. Um, for those of you who have just joined us, um, we are talking about a bolt-on turbo that mm -hmm. comes for the that goes for the stock 37 or stock 40 Correct. Briggs EFI motor. Yes. Correct. Um, and it's it's incredible. That's uh, that's all I have to say. As far as those everybody asking about when are we going to run it, we uh, that's what we did Wednesday. I had yep, yep. I had an incredible opportunity to go out uh, with these two gentlemen and run this motor. I took. I mean, we had drones, we had GoPros, we had big cameras. I mean, we we shot a whole bunch. We spent the whole day just shooting. So we're gonna have some really cool uh, images, video, and pictures coming out for you all because it was exciting. It was, it was, it was a really fun day. It was a really good day until three o'clock. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. the sales went out for London. Yeah, we went well, out for London. Yeah, and then Here Mr. We are uh, we yes, got Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> <laughs> Zuckerberg again. <laughs> um, Bubba Ramsey, who is a, a good fan of the show, he asked, what size turbo is it? That's top secret. You'll never know that. <laughs> Sorry, Bubba. <laughs> bum, bum, Sorry. Bum. Yeah, um, proprietary. If you want to know, then buy one and, and you can look at it. Yes. Yeah, but unfortunately, you won't even be able to tell what it is because I take care of that. There's no stickers or anything on it when I'm done shipping. I do that for my benefit. Um, Let's just say the turbo is perfectly sized for the motor. Let's put it that way. So nice. Well, you, I don't, like you it. don't want you don't want anybody to no, run out and like copy I said, you. Like, you, you know. Yeah, like 
I'm sorry, yeah. like this is how I make a living. I don't really need people to know all my little secrets. <laughs> if you want to do it, then you put it on. Like the I don't ask other people for their secrets, so there's just some things you don't need to know, and that's one of them. I'm sure if somebody knows enough about turbos and knows enough stuff, they might be able to figure it out. But sure, we're not going to tell you. Yeah. I'm just, Excellent. Joseph Thomas Harrison, is there any other tuning that has to be done to the motor once it's installed? Nothing. Nope. Just plug in the fuel controller. It's already going to be preset to all the dials where it needs to be. All you got to do is plug in one, uh, pull a, a plug out of your ECM, uh, plug the fuel controller in, and you're done. So really, I mean, it is meant to be plug and play. Yes. That's, that's the deal. And, and you know, the first initial take it out, you need to drive it really good. Like, you just need to take it easy on the first hour. Right. You know, like break it in break, and get the motor to adjust. You know, we got to remember these these motors have a computer in them that learn, and so you're just throwing boost to it, so it's a little freaked out. It's got to learn. You know, the map sensors, all that good stuff has to learn, and so don't be afraid to not open it wide open. You know, for about an hour and just kind of get the motor broken and play around with it. And the motor is gonna, you know, acclimate, and the you know the better you do that, the better it's gonna run and start to learn and and sure. break itself in, you know what I mean? Yes. Well, it needs a break-in procedure just like it the does, brand new It does, it does. And really so does. it just, these motors, these EFI motors are smart. They're smarter than any of the carburetor motors ever dreamed of being. And that's why EFI Live is, or EFI is the future. I mean, it just, it, it, it is the future, but it takes a little bit for them to learn. And I mean, you're throwing boost to a motor that never ever thought about having boost. And so it's it's tricking it a little bit. So it's it takes a little bit for it to kind of adjust. Sure. Um, Rob Rasmussen, how much increased horsepower does the turbo generate? 50%. Yep, 50% more, more horsepower. 50% more horsepower. Yep. You feel that in your back. And torque. Yeah. <laughs> torque. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's and, really awesome. And torque as well. Yes. And torque as well. I mean, the, the, it, it definitely gets up on plane faster. It comes out of the hole hard. Um, you know, it definitely... It, 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 there's there's a lot more torque than there was to begin with. That's the kind of thing, that's the kind of performance parts we make. We make parts that are going to uh, let you push heavier loads, put five guys in the boat, your fat dog, all your decoys, <laughs> yep. and and you're you're able to trust it to get you back home to the to the truck at night. Uh, we don't care about how fast you're going. We don't care about racing. We don't care about any of that stuff. We just build this stuff to push heavy loads, push big boats, and get home safe at night. So yeah. you're saying duck hunters overload everything when they when it comes to their boat? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's no. what I'm getting the impression. That's, oh, that, it's <laughs> funny. You that's why so these guys are spending more, you know, money on their motors is because when they load them up, they get slow. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I experienced that with the Argo stuff. Is it the harder you, like, load them up, the slower they go. And that, it sucks going 10 mile an hour when you should be doing 30. Yeah. Right. So this just helps you stay in that, you know, higher RPM and maintain that horsepower that technically the motor should have came stock. Like it should come this way. Frankly, Briggs and Stratton, this should come this way. <laughs> I mean, any other good questions? Um, yes, I yes. got more, more questions than you know what to do with. But guys, keep the questions oh, coming. Oh, yes. We'll be on all weekend. We'll answer them as fast as we can. Be patient. It's a holiday weekend. Some of us. Well, I think all of us planned on being off today, but yeah. we're, we... Wednesday really messed us up. <laughs> it did. It kind of threw a, threw a wrench in our plans. It did, it but did. that's okay. That's we, no, okay. That, that's good. Ta we, talk a little got, bit about the muffler. I've had several questions uh, come in about the muffler. Can we? Can you change muffler? No, is it, this, this muffler is designed for this kit. You, you just can't bolt another muffler on this. This is literally my turbo muffler. Like, it was designed with the whole turbo back pressure, flow. It's designed for this system. You just can't take it off and put a different one on. Um, I mean, you could take the muffler off and straight pipe it if you want to be that guy, but you know, we don't want that. We don't want that guy. And, and we don't want you to be And your tuning's gonna be messed up and everything. Like we tuned it specifically for this muffler and the way we designed it. So you sh there's Even no the, reason yeah. to take it off. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complete bolt-on kit that you don't have to touch, so. Yes. That's what we like the most about yes. it. Yes. Like it, it, it should be, it's, it's ready. It, it's it, ready it, it for has you. To just, ready. People aren't yep. going to you know, buy it. I've learned that throughout my life is if it doesn't bolt on with your truck and accessories and you know, if it doesn't bolt on, you're really not going to buy it. If you got to modify or cut and hack and whack, you don't want to do that. Yeah. No. So, yes. Um, which is Brandon Smith's question. We're a big fan of Brandon Smith as well. Are you going to have 
different settings from going from different elevations and changes? Yes. 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 So okay. when, that's a question we ask uh, when you purchase it is what elevation are you at? Right. Uh, it's basically going to be a breakdown of if you're over 2,500 feet, you're going to get, uh, we're going to turn the dial to a certain map. If you're below that, we're going to turn the dial to a different map. Yeah. So it's as simple as that. No, yes. Nobody has to hook up a computer or anything. The maps are already going to be preloaded into the tuner. You just turn the dial and it's done. Wow. Yes. Fantastic. Taking all the guesswork out of it. Well, yes. no, you don't want. I mean, uh, the end user doesn't no. need to know any how to adjust it. Like most people don't even know how to adjust any of that stuff, anyways. So why even have right. a try? Right, right. So. You just ask for trouble. Yeah. Um, also, do Recipe we need for design? <laughs> do we need to have original rockers and push rods? Uh, yes, because if you don't, if uh, aftermarket rockers are a different ratio, and they're going to change the tuning, so. The, answer, the simple answer to that is yes. Stock is the best thing to do. Stock yes. is the best thing. Leave it stock, we, 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 let it run. Stock. Um, all right, let's see. I mean, we, we would love to sell turbos to everybody out there with these motors, but the factor is, is there's too much different stuff going on from too many different companies. We don't know what the ratios of the motors are. We It's just going to be a, too much of a headache to try to figure out. Maybe eventually down the road we'll they'll build some heads and then maybe you can buy some heads and switch everything over but that's going to be way down the line you know what i mean yep. yes. yeah stock 37 yeah a lot of repeat questions only. only no 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 carbureted motors just no. fuel injected motors and it is quiet we have had a lot of people asking about uh, yes. uh sound levels and yes it is quiet it's, it's quiet well it's quieter than stock but yes. you still get the performance that you need Yes. Exactly. So there's no need to change it. Just no. Well, you can't change it. You can't it. change no, it. it doesn't, like, don't even ask. It, like, you can't even ask if you, you're going to change. No change. It. It's built put, for the kit. Yeah. You couldn't put any other uh, muffler on here. It just no. doesn't work that way. It doesn't bolt up to the heads the same way. It doesn't bolt up to the turbo. It doesn't bolt up to anything. So yeah. Um, Jeff Ellis, when will this be available for purchase? Um, so basically, we pre-sold the first batch, and the next batch is going to be ready uh, somewhere around a month. Just get on the list. Okay. Uh, Got a good one right here for yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you have to re gear the motor? Uh, uh, the answer to that is probably. It's all going to depend on your exact boat, uh, your the, the load you put in it, the gears you already have to begin with. Uh, so that's the advantage of a mud buddy is is you can change the gears. Uh, but the the answer to that is probably because you're going to get uh, somewhere around four to 500 more RPMs than you were getting before. So that's going to mean you're probably going to need to change the gear ratio or you're going to need to change your prop, if, uh, if, especially if you can't change your gear ratio. That uh, was uh, Trevor Latner. Trevor what, what we found is the, the Raptor 2 prop runs the very best on this thing. Um, I, for, for the past 10, 15 years, I've kind of been a, a, a hater of three blade props until this new Raptor 2 came out. And it's it, it performs as good as a as a two blade um, or better, and it's got way less vibration, way less tiller torque. It's a it's a really really nice. And that was his I next agree. question too. What is the best prop? To, yeah, prop to run Raptor two yeah. by far. Yeah, Raptor absolutely. It's got a good hole shot. It's got good speeds. It, it's good all the way around so far. I'm with you on that glade. I, I kind of had a hard time for a little bit until this latest one. Yeah, it's it, it's a sweet. It is. Well, and I noticed, you know, just driving them as much as I have, the you know the two thing, it it, it vibrates so yeah. much. No, it's got it's got some vibration in it. Um, let's see. I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw something out real quick. Yeah, go ahead, guys. If you need to know what your gearing is, locate your oil filter. We'll turn them over this way. Maybe we could get a little closer. When they're camo, they're a little bit harder. Oil filters here below your tube is the bottom of the block and the drain plug. There's a number to the left of the plug and a number to the right of the plug. That's what the guys at Backwater Performance are gonna to need to know if you need to get some more RPMs or change the gearing. They can tell you with those two numbers what you have. This one is it, this one's got a 36 tooth on the top and a 47 tooth on the bottom. Yeah, so we've got- go sideways right here really fast. So here you are right here, guys. You got a six here and you have a seven here. The left number indicates the um, clutch up on the top the lower number to the right is your drive. So they'll need to know those numbers when you start talking gearing and those kinds of things. That's what's going to help them help you get the right gearing. If you don't know those numbers, you can pull the clutch cover off. It's written on the clutch and also down on the inside of the drive. Just drop your camera in there, your phone, take a picture, pull it out, 
and it's got the, the markings there. So yep. if you don't have them on the block, pull the clutch cover off and you can find them. Or the old school way, mark them and spin the prop and yeah. you count it one at a time. The thing that I recommend is is go and take it out as it is with your the prop you've got and the, the gearing you've got and see what your RPMs are. Uh, once you figure out what your RPMs are at, you know, we can get a baseline and then we can figure out what gearing you need, what prop you need. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to stay on the rev limiter with any of these motors. Yeah, no, we're, we're that's a good point. We're, uh, our goal, uh, what I tell everybody that wants new gearing or new props, or especially with this one where it re reaches such high RPMs, is don't go over 4,500 RPMs. Yeah. Uh, you're just going to cause yourself problems and, and push rods and, and uh, you name it. But uh, when we gear, when we uh, recommend gearing and props to people, we try to do it to get to 4,500 or under. Yeah. Excellent. Um, let's talk a little bit about warranty. So there's a six month warranty on all the parts. Um, anything that comes in the box, there's a six month warranty on. We don't think any of that stuff will ever break. And you know, at the end of the day, if something does, like we want to take care of you. Like this is our name, this is our product. And if for some stupid reason you hit a tree and, and rip the whole cover off, like, yeah, we're probably gonna make you buy that. I mean, we might give you a discount, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to buy that. If it breaks and vibrates loose, yeah, we're gonna send you a new one. Yep. So, um, Jeff, Fuchs from Team Jeff. Hey Jeff, <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, I'm guessing this will affect the factory warranty. Yes, for yes sure. it definitely will. will. For sure, yeah. Yes, it will. It will. But it so will. does it everybody will. else. So does yeah. everybody yeah. else. Yes, it's just how it is. If, like you if, change, gonna, if you modify anything, your warranty is gone. Your warranty is, is voided, yes. Like yes. I said, this is a bolt-on system. It can be unbolted as well. I'm just gonna leave that out there. Will it fit on a 44? No, no, no. no. Stock 37 or 40 EFI only. Yes. Yes. And like we said, maybe in the future there'll be some heads they offer that are, you know, can replace the heads for these guys, or, sure. you know, or try to make that work so they can get a turbo. Like we're, you know, we're going to try to do that stuff, but that's down the road. So yeah, that's a lot of R and D that we still have to do yeah. and test, and we're just not going to sell stuff if it's not going to work. So tell us how much testing have you done? I've had a couple of questions about how many hours you put on it already. What kind of has been yeah. your process testing? So these? there's five of them out there all across the country, different elevations, different uh, people boats, running them. different people running them, uh, and we've asked them go break it, go yes. see, go go run the crap out of it, and uh -huh. go break it. Let's see what this thing will handle. Uh, no no issues yet. Um, I don't know, as far as hours, I don't know. There's over a couple hundred, yeah, something like least. that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably more than that. But, but on the one that, uh, that Dustin has, that one's got over, what, 100. over 100 hours? Yeah, 150, yeah. on a 37. Like that. that was the first original one we did. That was a 37. I mean, we've, yeah. we've, there was I, no I have done everything I can to try to beat the crap out of it. I've run a lot of boost on it. I've tried to break it. Um, and this is what I do. I, you, you know, you gotta test your stuff out before you release it. And I'm, I'm all about trying to break shit. And if I can't break it, I'm sure there's people out there that can break stuff. But I'm pretty good at trying to break it, especially R and D and testing. Oh no, there's people. That are oh yeah, I know. You're always gonna be somebody to break it. But, but that's where we learn, and you know, we, we love that kind of feedback because then that means we can maybe go back to the drawing board and perfect our product even better, so nobody ever has that problem again. And that's. That's just how this process works, you know. That's why it takes a team of people and a, and a good group of people to make something like this work and, you know, reliable and safe. Sure. So. Um, a question from Jody Hetch. How's the turbo compared to a Mako kit? Uh, so the, uh, I guess we'll go back to the horsepower thing again. The, the uh, I would say the, the Mako kit makes about 40% more than stock, and this one makes about 50% more than stock. Um, it's it's a tiny bit different power because the Mako adds so much more compression with the, the aftermarket uh, rods and pistons and and all that stuff. Uh, but it's it's you know like I said. But about that's the biggest difference. You have to open exactly. up your motor you to, and you have to pull, send the, it you have off to pull the engine off the frame. You have to open it up. You have to put the pistons, and rods, and cam and all that stuff inside. This is completely bolt on. Uh, but still, this has got 10% more horsepower than the Mako kit does. There's been some other questions I think that some people have had that about uh, have, having a built motor. It, like, wouldn't built motors be stronger? Yes, in some aspects. Maybe rods and pistons, but when you start adding compression and changing all this stuff is when everything's really tricky with the turbo. Turbos don't like compression, so 
if you were to say build a motor and put all good pistons and parts and everything in it and don't add compression, that'd probably be a great candidate for a turbo because you still have all the stock compression and stuff going on, you just have aftermarket better parts, which in some ways could be, but I mean, there's maybe, been no failure. So there's far, been no so failure of stock parts, so why even spend the money to do that? So, sure, it's um, kind of a waste. That's a good point that you mentioned, and I want to answer this. Um, maybe Dustin and I can answer this better. Mechanical issues that we have had during R and D, and uh, I can bet you any anything. Not a lot of people can answer this question freely, but I can tell that for at least what the three motors that we have had you and I personally yeah. interacted with we have broken two head gaskets yeah and maybe a set of rings and that and, and that's all that's and that all that was all the fuel and yeah. that is because well, that we is had a bad the, fuel the very lines reason so why that's R &D happens I specialize like I, I I have to specifically say like fuel is a major a thing and if you skip out on fuel or you don't fill your tank up and you're hitting the rev limiter you're racking it it yep you you might blow it up like yep. just just because of the octane but it's no different than you putting shitty gas in your car and, and taking it to the racetrack and trying to race it it's going to happen yep okay yeah, so, so I, I just wanted to the head gasket, that yeah yeah, that's, that's yeah and the head gaskets is from pre-detonation and the shitty fuel and because, and it's of, just, the, and because yes, of the gas and yes. it goes back to the gas but that's how we <laughs> learn you know i yeah. mean we don't like we don't want customers blowing their head gaskets up nope. and learning from this. Like we've already done the R and D and the research. Like we don't, we don't need any more guinea pigs out there to do our testing. We we've done all of our testing ourselves. So um, very good. Uh, Bubba asks, um, can it be added on a on a mud body from purchase? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so basically you contact the dealer or you contact Mud Buddy um, if you want to order a motor depending on where you're at in the country and you can order a stock 37 or a stock 40 from Mud Buddy. Uh -huh. um, they, then you call me and say I want to add a turbo. Mud Buddy, uh, we come up, we pick up the stock motor from Mud Buddy, we do what we need to do to it, we put it back in the crate and ship it right to your door. Fantastic. Good. Good, good, good. Um, Ryan Larkin, how does all this handle in zero or below weather? Uh, exactly the same as it does in any other weather. The yeah. Weather doesn't matter. There's weather there's sensors matter. in the motor that deal with that to change the fueling, um, so it doesn't matter. And don't be afraid when you get to the motor ramp when it's that cold to let things warm up. I mean, it's no different than going starting your car in the morning when it's freezing out. Like, let it warm up. I mean, you don't want to start it and take off from the dock and make seven pounds of boost. That nothing has freed up the engine ain't up to our operating temperature the pistons haven't expanded yeah you know that's like, just smart that's for just, your whole motor yeah you just need to be smart about that like right. that's that, yeah that's <laughs> with anything you should probably let your stuff warm up before you hot rod it we okay. ran we ran two of them in Idaho last year and you know negative 10 degrees it was cold for, for <laughs> yeah all, all the time so no problems good remember guys good. like and share get this out to your friends some of them aren't watching it right now, but they can leave. Uh, yes, yeah, this, this will stay on for a long time, and we're we're really really pleased to have you guys. We're excited about this turbo. We've been we've been looking at it for a year now um, on just our end. So I can I can imagine how excited you guys are to get yeah, this out. Yeah, it's just been a long time coming, and I, that's why I say I don't just build something and release it real quick. I I think you need to spend a lot of time doing R and D and. Some people don't know what that entails, and they may, you know, never will. And so, it, there's a lot that goes into building something like this. Yes, so. agreed. And it is here. Yes. That's exciting. Yes. Um, really, congratulations, you guys, because it Thank really you. is phenomenal. It's a really, really excellent project. Um, we're going to keep this up. We're going to continue to answer questions over the next uh, little while to make sure that everybody uh, gets an answer that they want. Like and share. Uh, Glade was good enough. He's going to uh, to give away some hats and shirts. Um, we're just going to grab everybody who likes and shares. We're going to put it in a big pot and draw out a name. Sounds good. We'll Don't be stuff. afraid to go like my page. It's OB Design and OB Design Fab on Instagram. So Yes, that was my next. I was I, I got cool. you covered. Yes, go on to OBO Design. Um, they're really, really awesome. And I'm going to post a link to okay. you guys as well in this description uh, once I get and, back up to the and office. Like I said, if, if, yes, if, if you well, have so questions and stuff, uh, make sure you contact Glade and those guys. And then if it's something they can't answer then I'll, I I will step in and you know and help and, and do what we need to do yes so absolutely so BPS is going to be your main contact yes. yep. to purchase these motors yes or these bolt-on kits so yes. uh, that's that's awesome do that.
Okay. But thank you guys for coming on yeah, and sharing with us and taking us out yet, uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I wish we would have been able to do it on Wednesday. That was it really, been... really exciting. It was, it was uh, you know, if I had hair, it would have been blown back. No <laughs> doubt about it. My beard was floating. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's no hair involved here, so... Uh, but, uh, it must be in the Utah water. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. But thank you all so Where much. It's the age. It's yeah. the age of <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, even though it's not our regular time on Wednesday, uh, we hope you had a really, really excellent 4th of July um, and that you continue to have a really safe weekend. Uh, we'll see you right back here next week, Wednesday, at our usual time. Um, until then, stay safe out there in the shallow water. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.